Hello and welcome to today's session on normal distribution. I am Dr. Maruf Ahmad Mir, PhD in Financial Markets and MBA in Finance and Accounts from AMU Aligarh. And at present, I am associated with Asian Business School Noida as Associate Professor in the area of Finance and Accounts. Dear students, let's start with understanding the concept of normal distribution. The normal distribution is also called as distribution of continuous random variable. So far, we have been concerned with the discrete probability distributions. In this section, we shall turn to case in which the variable can take on any value within a given range and in which the probability distribution is continuous. Normal distribution, also known as the Gaussian distribution is a probability distribution that is symmetric about the mean showing that the data near the mean are more frequent in occurrence than the data far from the mean. In graph form, normal distribution will appear as a bell curve. One more way of defining the normal distribution is that it is a continuous probability distribution that is symmetrically around its mean. Most of the observations cluster around the central peak and the probabilities for values further away from the mean taper off equally in both directions. Extreme values in both tails of the distribution are similarly unlikely. While the normal distribution is symmetric, not all symmetric distributions are normal. For example, the student's T. Cauchy and the logic distributions are symmetric. A very important continuous dis probability distribution is the normal distribution. Several mathematicians were instrumental in its development, including the 18th century mathematician, astronomer Carl Gauss. In honor of his work, the normal probability distribution is often called the Gaussian distribution. There are two basic reasons why the normal distribution occupies such a prominent place in the statistics. First, it has some properties that make it applicable to a greater many situations in which it is necessary to make inferences by taking samples. We will find that the normal distribution is a useful sampling distribution. Second, the normal distribution comes close to fitting the actual observed frequency distribution of many phenomena, including the human characteristics like weight, height, and IQ, outputs from physical processes, dimensions, and yields, and other measures of the interest to managers in both the public and private sectors. Characteristics of the normal probability distribution. Look for a moment at the figure on the screen. This diagram suggests several important features of a normal probability distribution. Number one, the curve has a single peak. Thus, it is unimodal. It has the bell shape that we described earlier. Number two, the mean of a normal distributed population lies at the center of its normal curve. Number three, because of the symmetry of the normal probability distribution, the median and the mode of the distribution are also at the center. 
Thus, for a normal curve, the mean, median, and mode are the same value. Number four, the two tails of the normal probability distribution extend indefinitely and never touch the horizontal axis. Graphically, of course, this is impossible to show. Most real life populations do not extend forever in both directions. But for such populations, the normal distribution is a convenient approximation. There is no single normal curve, but rather a family of normal curves. To define a particular normal probability distribution, we need only two parameters, the mean denoted by mu and the standard deviation sigma, areas under the normal curve. No matter what the value of mu and sigma are for a normal probability distribution, the total area under the normal curve is 1, so that we may think of areas under the curve as probabilities. Mathematically, it is true that, number one, approximately 68% of all the values in a normal distribution population lie within plus minus one standard deviation from the mean. Number two, approximately 95.5% of all the values in a normal distribution population lie within plus minus two standard deviations from the mean. Number three, Approximately 99.7% of all the values in a normal distribution population lie within plus minus three standard deviations from the mean. These three statements are shown graphically in the figure. Figure shows three different ways of measuring the area under the normal curve. However, very few of the applications we shall make of the normal probability distribution involve intervals of exactly one, two, or three standard deviation, plus and minus, from the mean. What should we do about all other cases? Fortunately, we can refer to statistical table constructed for precisely these situations. They indicate the portions of the area under the normal curve that are contained within any number of standard deviations, plus and minus, from the mean. It is not possible or necessary to have a different table for every possible nominal curve. Instead, we can use a table of the standard normal probability distribution, a normal distribution with mu equal to 0 and sigma equal to 1, to find the area under any normal curve. With this table, we can determine the area or probability that the normal distribution random variable will lie within certain distances from the mean. These distances are defined in terms of standard deviations. We can better understand the concept of standard normal probability distribution by examining specific relationship of standard deviation to the normal curve. Look at the figure. Here we have illustrated two normal probability distributions, each with a different mean and a different standard deviation. Both area A and area B the shaded areas under the curve contain the same proportion of the total area under the normal curve. Why? Because both these areas are defined as being the area between the mean and one standard deviation to the right of the mean. All intervals containing the same number of standard deviations from the mean will contain the same proportion of the total area under the curve for any normal probability distribution. This makes possible the use of only one standard normal probability distribution table. Let's now try to understand how to find the percentage of the total area under the curve. Let's find out what proportion of the total area under the curve is represented by colored area in the figure. In previous figure, we saw that an interval of one standard deviation plus and minus from the mean contained about 68% of the total area under the curve. In figure, however, we are interested only in the area between the mean and one standard deviation to the right of the mean, plus, not plus and minus. This area must be half of 68% or 34% for both distributions. One more example, we reinforce our point. Look at the two normal probability distributions in figure. Each of these has a different mean and a different standard deviation. 
the colored area under both curves however contains the same proportion of the total area under the curve why because both colored areas fall within two standard deviations plus and minus from the mean two standard deviations plus and minus from the mean include the same proportion of the total area under any normal probability distribution using the standard normal probability distribution table normal distribution table shows the area under the normal curve between the mean and any value of the normal distributed random variable notice in this table the location of the columns labeled the value for is derived from the formula where x is value of the random variable with which we are concerned mu is mean of the distribution of this random variable sigma is standard deviation of this distribution and z is the number of standard deviations from x to the mean of this distribution why do we use z rather than the number of standard deviations normally distributed random variables take on many different units of measure dollar inches parts per million pounds time because we shall use one table table 1 in the appendix we talk in terms of standard deviations which really means standard deviation and we denote them by the symbol z the standard normal probability distribution table is organized in terms of standard units or z value it gives the value for only half of the area under the normal curve beginning with 0.0 at the mean because the normal probability distribution is symmetric return to the previous figure to review this point the values true for one half of the curve are true for the other we can use this one table for problem solving both sides of the normal curve working a few examples will help us to feel comfortable with the table skewness and kurtosis real life data rarely if ever follow a perfect normal distribution the skewness and kurtosis coefficients measure how different a given distribution is from a normal distribution the skewness measures the symmetry of the distribution the normal distribution is symmetric and has a skewness of 0 if the distribution of data set has a skewness less than 0 or negative skewness then the left tail of the distribution is longer than the right tail positive skewness implies that the right tail of the distribution is longer than the left tail types of skewness positive skewed or right skewed in statistics a positively skewed distribution is a sort of distribution where unlike symmetrically distributed data where all measures of the central tendency mean median and mode equal each other with positively skewed data the measures are dispersing which means positively skewed distribution distribution is a type of distribution where the mean median and mode of the distribution are positive rather than negative or zero in positively skewed the mean of the data is greater than the median a large number of data pushed on the right hand side in other words the results are bent towards the lower side the mean will be more than the median as the median is the middle value and mode is always the highest value the extreme positive skewness is not desirable for distribution as a high level of skewness can cause misleading results the data transformation tools are helping to make the skewed data closer to the normal distribution for positively skewed distribution the famous transformation is the log transformation the log transformation proposes the calculations of the natural logarithm for each value of the data set negative skewed or left skewed a negative skewed distribution is the straight reverse of the positive skewed distribution In statistics, negative skewed distribution refers to a distribution model where more values are plots on the right side of the graph, and the tail of the distribution is spreading on the left side. In negatively skewed, the mean of the data is less than the median. A large number of data pushed on the left side 
negatively skewed distribution is a type of distribution where the mean, median and mode of the distribution are negative rather than positive or zero. The Curtis's statistic measures the thickness of the tail ends of a distribution in relation to the tail of the normal distribution. Distributions with a large Curtis's exhibit tail data exceeding the tail of the normal distribution. For example, five or more standard deviations from the mean. Distributions with low Curtis's exhibit tail data that is generally less extreme than the tails of the normal distribution. The normal distribution has a Curtis's of three which indicates the distribution has neither fat nor thin tails. Therefore, if an observed distribution has a courtesy greater than 3, the distribution is said to have heavy tails when compared to the normal distribution. If the distribution has a courtesy of less than 3, it is said to have thin tails when compared to the normal distribution. Excess courtesy. Excess courtesies is used in statistics and probability theory to compare the courtesies coefficient with the normal distribution. Excess courtesies can be positive, leptocurtic distribution, negative, platocurtic distribution, or near to zero, mesocurtic distribution. Since normal distributions have a courtesies of 3, excess courtesies is calculated by subtracting courtesies by 3. So, excess courtesies will be courtesies minus 3. Types of excess courtesies leptocurtic or heavy tailed distribution. Curtis is more than normal distribution, mesocurtic, Curtis is same as normal distribution, platocurtic or short tail distribution, Curtis is less than normal distribution. Leptocurtic means Curtis is more than 3, leptocurtic is heavy, very long and shiny tail, which means there are more chances of outliers. Positive value of courtesies indicates that distribution is peaked and possesses thick tails. An extreme positive courtesies indicates a distribution where more of the numbers are located in the tails of the distribution instead of around the mean. Platycurtic courtesies has less than 3. Platycurtic having a lower tail and stretched around the center tails means most of the data points are present in high proximity with mean. A platycurtic distribution is flatter, less peaked when compared with the normal distribution. Mesocurtic meaning courtesies equal to 3. Mesocurtic is the same as the normal distribution which means courtesies is near to 0. In mesocurtic, distributions are moderate in breadth and curves are a medium peaked height. How normal distribution is used in finance? The assumption of a normal distribution is applied to asset prices as well as the price action. Traders may plot price points over time to fit recent price actions into a normal distribution. The further price action moves from the mean, in this case the more likelihood that an asset is over or undervalued. Traders can use the standard deviation to suggest potential trades. This type of trading is generally done on very short time frames as large time scale makes it much harder to pick entry and exit points. Similarly, many statistical theories attempt to model asset prices under the assumption that they follow a normal distribution. In reality, price distributions tend to have fat tails and therefore have courtesies greater than 3. Such assets have had price movements greater than 3 standard deviations beyond the mean more than would be expected under the assumption of a normal distribution. Even if an asset has went through a long period where it fits a normal distribution, there is no guarantee that the past performance truly informs the future prospects. Shortcomings of the normal probability distribution. Earlier in this section, we noted that tails of the normal distribution approach but never touch the horizontal axis. This implies that there is some probability, although it may be very small, that a random variable can take on enormous values. It is possible for right hand tail of a normal curve to assign a minute probability of a person's weighing 2000 pounds. Of course, no one would believe that such a person exists. A weight of 1 ton or more would lie about 50 standard deviations to the right of the mean and would have a probability that begin with 250 zeros to the right of the decimal point. We do not lose much accuracy by ignoring values far out 
in the tails. But in the exchange of the convenience of using this theoretical model, we must accept the fact that it can assign impossible empirical values. Choosing the correct probability distribution. Students, if we plan to use a probability to describe a situation, we must be careful to choose the right one. We need to be certain that we are not using the poison probability distribution when it is binomial that more nearly describes the situation under this study. Remember that the binomial distribution is applied when the number of trials is fixed before the experiment begins and each trial is independent and can result in only two mutually outcomes, success, failure, either yes or no. Like the binomial, the poison distribution applies when each trial is independent. But although the probability is a poison distribution approaches zero after the first few values, the number of possible values is infinite. The results are not limited to two mutually exclusive outcomes. Under some conditions, the poison distribution can be used as an approximation of the binomial, but not always. All the assumptions that form the basis of a distribution must be met if our use of that distribution is to produce meaningful results. Even though the normal probability distribution is the only continuous distribution, we have discussed in this chapter, we should realize that there are other useful continuous distributions. In the topics to come, we shall study three additional continuous distributions, students T distribution and F. Each of these is of interest to decision makers who solve problems using statistics. That is all for today. Hope you had understood. So we will meet in the next episode with a new topic. Till then, take care. Goodbye.